welcome back so today's video i want to do kind of a little bit of a march monthly recap and a like unboxing with me i have a couple new books and a bunch of books that i read in march and i want to get through all of it in this video so i'm going to try to kind of go a little bit quick but um thank you for joining me and let's get right into the books so the first thing i was going to show is my book of the month it is the beginning of april so i just received my um april book of the month and i got a few books this time so um i'm gonna get right into showing you what i got so my monthly pick for april was abby jimenez um just for the summer i have been looking forward to this book for a while so i was very very excited that it was a pick for book of the month so i picked this one and then um i got two more add-ons for april the other add-on is kristen hannah's the women this book just came out um i believe in march Oh, February. So it just came out in February and I didn't pick it as like a February pick, but I'm very, I was very, very excited to get to this book. I knew that I would add it very soon as an add on. Um, and then another one was what the river knows. This one also came out. This one came out in 2023 at the very end of the year. It was another one that I did not pick to be in my box, but it's been, um, on my TBR for a while. So I'm very excited to get those three books. Then next up, I went to one of my favorite used bookstores, I think a, a week or two ago, and they had, they were doing a sale. It's used and new books. So I have three used books that I got and then two new books. The used books that I got were A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Um, this is one, a classic that I've never read, that I've always heard is such a good book but I've never picked it up. And it has like these really pretty pink sprayed edges and then this really pretty blue, like kind of, I don't even know how to explain the texture of this cover, but um, I guess it's like a leather cover, but very, very pretty. Um, very excited about that one. Then the next one that I got, this one was used. I got The Bone Crier's Dawn. This is the second book to The Bone Crier's Moon duology. Um, I have read The Bone Cryer's Moon, but it was a long time ago, and so I'm very excited to, I think I might pick up the first book again and reread that first book and then pick up the second one since it's just a duology, um, but I'm very excited that I got this. It is honestly in really good condition, like you could barely tell that it was used, so I'm very, very excited about that. And then this one is quite used, but I got it for pretty cheap, but that is the ballad of songbird and snakes uh, i've been wanting to pick up this book but i didn't really want to pay like full price for it and i have the rest of the series in hardcover so when i saw it at the used bookstore it was like three or four dollars i was like okay i have to pick it up even though it is a little beat up definitely was a well-loved copy but that doesn't really bother me too much especially since i got it for so cheap um then the two new books that I picked up, they had a sale going for these two books. They were, um, I don't remember what the percentage was off, but they were on sale. So I picked up Sanctuary of the Shadow. This one I had been really wanting to get and I hadn't picked it up yet since it came out. It also does have sprayed edges. Um, so that was a huge deal for me. I felt like I really had to get this one. And then the other new one is another very anticipated book for me. And that is The Prisoner's uh, Throne. Yes, Throne. Um, this is Holly Black's latest book in, I guess, it's it's this one is its own series this one i cannot remember what this one's called but it's a spin-off series after the cruel prince series and i really really love the cruel prince books so i did read the first one in this series that came out last year or the year before um and i really liked it so i've been very excited to pick up this next book and read this so hopefully i'll get to this one soon especially since i just reread the whole um, Cruel Prince series just in the very beginning of this year. So it's kind of exciting to pick up the, the series after that. 
So that was my rapid fire. Um, all the new books that I got in March and kind of end of February. Some of these I picked up a little while ago, but, um, then moving on to, I'm going to try to do this as quickly as I can as well, but my March, um, reads. So starting off with this one was very anticipated and very, very good. We have A Fate Inked in Blood by Danielle L. Jensen. I picked up this one. I actually pre-ordered it, I believe, from Amazon because it had the sprayed edges and I really did not want to miss out on getting the first edition with the sprayed edges. So I pre-ordered this one and then once it came, it was so beautiful that I was like, okay, I have to read this as soon as possible. So I picked it up immediately and I believe I gave this one a, I actually gave it a five stars it looks like on my Goodreads. I couldn't remember if it was like a four and a half or a five star read for me, but I honestly very, very much enjoyed it. Um, I am a big fan of the, the game Skyrim. I've played that game for years and this book gave me like all the Skyrim vibes. It was very, very fun. And so I really, really loved this. So highly, highly recommend. This is a great fantasy read. Um, yeah, brand new um, book for the people who haven't heard of it. This book is also on book of the month as an add-on just for the people who um, are interested. Then my laptop almost just fell. The next read of the year was, let's see. That was another book of the month pick. This was from a while ago, but it was What Lies in the Woods. Um, this is a thriller. Um, it's about, I think I've talked about this on the channel before, but I will talk about it. I'll kind of give a brief synopsis again. Um, this was about a group of girls that when they were young, they were like out playing in the woods and something very tragic happened to the main character. And we don't really know the whole book is like, her piecing that whole night together and what actually happened um, because she kind of blacked it out. She was very young and it was very traumatic. And so she blacked out most of the event of what happened that night. And so the rest of the book is like piecing together what actually happened. You know, can she get those memories back? Can she remember what happened? Um, this was very, very good, very intriguing, had my attention from the very start to the very finish. Um, and I really, really liked this one. I did rate this one a five stars as well. I loved this one. The next book that I read was, um, also a newer book and that is Light Lark. I believe this one came out sometime in end of 2022, early 2023, I believe. Um, so it's newer and yeah, it was 2023. So this is a newer book and the second book is out to this. Um, this is a fantasy, fantasy book and it's like, um, there's different, like, I honestly, I'm going to butcher this synopsis. So if you guys are interested, <laughs> just go look up the synopsis for Light Lark. Honestly, it was very good. Um, it was very intriguing, but I remember coming off of a huge high from reading Crescent City 3 before this book. And so it actually took me a while to get through it. I started this one right after Crescent City and had to like put it down and try to move on to a couple other things and then pick this one back up because I read Crescent City 3 and I was on this huge like high of all my favorite characters, one of my favorite stories. And I felt like I was like judging this one unfairly when I first picked it up. So that's why I put it down. I read a couple other books and then I picked it back up. And I'm really glad that I did that because I feel like it was, it was so much better because I did that because I put this book down and then picked it back up later. But I try not to pick it back up too far after because then you won't remember what happened in the beginning. But um, I did really, I really enjoyed this one. I really, really enjoyed this book and I gave it a four star and I'm very excited to read the second book. Then the next two go together um, and these books are The Ballad of Never After and then A Curse for True Love. These are two books in the um, why I 
am blanking again on the first book. Once Upon a Broken Heart, I believe is the first book, right? Yes, Once Upon a Broken Heart is the first book. And then, yeah, we have A Ballad of Never After and A Curse for True Love. Um, this series, I kind of brought you guys along with me on reading this. So if you're interested, I did kind of talk about when I read the first book uh, in a different vlog, but I actually had a really hard time with the first book and I didn't love the first book. I think I gave it like a three, three and a half star. It was good, but for some reason I was having a really hard time getting attached to the characters. Um, I had a hard time like with the narrator of the audiobook and I just, I just had a really hard time with it. But I told myself that I'm not gonna judge a book or a series by the first book. I have to at least give the second book a chance before I completely like just don't finish the whole series. So I picked up the second book and let me tell you, I'm so, so happy that I did that because this book was so good. One of my, I honestly feel like this is like, not like one of my favorite fantasy series ever because I have a lot of favorite fantasy series, but like one of my favorite like fairy tale style fantasy books, if that makes sense. Like this just reminded me of like old folklore stories, fairy tale stories. Like this was, the series was so good. The second book had me hooked. I could not put it down. I think I read the second book in a, in a day and then the third book in a day. Like I flew through these two books. I absolutely loved them and they are both, um, both five stars for me. And I know I give five stars out a little bit easily. Some people are like a lot pickier on when they give a five star, but like if I enjoyed a book that much and I'm highly recommending people to read it, like that is a five star to me. This book was, both of these were five stars. So for anybody who kind of struggled through reading the first book, please give the second book a shot. If you don't love it, it's okay. It's not for you. But um, for me, it changed my whole outlook on the whole series. So I hope that that helps somebody else read this series. Then my next two books, I'm going to have to pop up pictures over here for them. Um, one of them was, sorry, I have my laptop over here, The Prison Healer. Um, that book I read, it's by uh, Lynette Noni. Um, that was actually kind of a random one. I actually picked that one up because it was on the cover of the book. It is blurbed by Sarah J. Moss. And I saw that and so I was like, I've actually, I don't know that I've ever read a book that she blurbed on the cover. And I've definitely never read a book because she blurbed the cover. And so I felt like, okay, I have to, I have to at least just pick up one of those books that she's blurbed and like see what it's all about and see if I love it. Um, and so I felt like this book was a like 3.5, maybe a four star read. Um, I did really enjoy the whole thing. It felt very long though. So it felt like, I don't know. Again, this is another one that it's a series and I only read the first book. So I don't know, like, I don't love judging a series based on one book because so much happens. Like I can't imagine judging the whole Throne of Glass series just on the book Throne of Glass. Like that's just unthinkable to me. So I feel like, or even the whole Akatar series just on A Court of Thorns and Roses. Like the series, they both just get so much better throughout the whole series. So. I feel the same way about this one. Like this was probably a four star, maybe maybe a 3.5, but I could see how continuing to read this series, it would get better and better. And I could eventually overall probably rate this series higher. Um, so I'm definitely interested and I'm definitely gonna continue to read um, that series. I just don't know how soon I'll get to reading the other ones. Then the next book that I read was, um, Oh, I forgot to put, oh yeah. So then the next book that I read was The Housemaid by Frieda McFadden. Um, I picked up that book because our book club book was um, The Teacher by Frieda McFadden. And I had a very hard time reading that book, but she comes so highly recommended in like the thriller mystery world that I felt like 
I have to read another one of her books and see like a really popular one and see was it just that book because the the plot's kind of heavy um on some topics that I don't love so I picked up The Housemaid and that book to me was a four star I actually really enjoyed it there was I liked the writing I loved the like it just kept me on the edge of my seat. It was it was very intriguing. I really could not wait to see like how the whole thing was gonna play out from start to finish. And honestly, it shocked me. Like this book kind of floored me towards the end. I was like not at all expecting that to take the turn that it did. So I really enjoyed that. I really, I love a book that can make me feel that way. I'm the type of person that tries really hard not to guess the like what the plot twist is going to be in a book so I kind of I love the feeling of like just being floored and being flabbergasted like that is the best feeling to me and that's part of the reason that I love to read mystery books so I kind of try not to guess it and I didn't guess it I felt like um it really did shock me and I loved that so that was a four star then I only have two more that I read in March and one that I've read since um, in the beginning of April. So the next one that I read in March was my March book of the month book, and that is Listen for the Lie. Uh, this book, I could not put this down. This was a five star read to me. I really love the books, books that are like mystery books that are told kind of from like a podcast style, if that makes sense. I read in the beginning of the year, um, None of This is True by Lisa Jewell. And on my channel, I talked about how the audiobook really, really just made you feel like you were sitting there listening to a podcast. Like you're you're watching the story on like, unfold and you're just watching the whole thing happen and throughout it keeps playing like episodes of this podcast and it sounded so realistic like I felt like I was sitting there listening to this podcast and part of the story like it felt very realistic I just loved that I could not get enough of that so when book of the month had a pick that was a podcast style murder mystery where the podcast host has the biggest like um what's the word um she's the biggest everybody everybody thinks that she did it everybody thinks she murdered this person um it was the main character's best friend and everybody thinks that she killed her and so the podcast host finally gets her on the show to talk about what happened and very very good very intriguing i just could not i could not stop like i did not want to put this down I devoured the whole thing and I read it in the span of like a day or two and then immediately texted my mom and was like, oh my gosh, if you loved None of This Is True, please go read Listen for the Lie. And she read it and devoured it and loved it. So this was 100% a five star to me. This is one of those books that I, if somebody wants a good murder mystery, this is what I'm going to recommend. First and foremost, it's the first one that's going to come to my head. I loved it. So please go pick up Listen for the Lie. This book was so good. Then the last book that I read in March was yet again, another book of the month. I really blew through a lot of book of the month picks this month, um, but I read Ready or Not. Um, this one was a really cute, like fiction romance story about a girl who has her first and only one night stand in her whole life and she ends up pregnant. And so she goes to tell her best friend who is married and has been struggling with um, not being able to get pregnant. And so her best friend is kind of sad. She, I mean, she's like willing to do whatever, you know, our main character needs to help her out. But she's also really disappointed because, you know, she wasn't even trying for a baby and she got pregnant. And then she is trying for a baby and can't get pregnant. Um, and then it's the person who she least expects who ends up being her biggest help and the person who just like helps her with appointments and brings her food and is always there to listen to you know what's going on in her life and that is actually her best friend's brother shepherd and i loved the story i was like very i was very intrigued i was very like roped in it wasn't like my favorite book i've ever read but it definitely was very good and I would recommend it to people, but it just wasn't like, 
I had very mixed feelings about it. I didn't, I didn't absolutely love it, but I also didn't dislike it at all. So it was very much like kind of right in that, you know, I don't know. I guess I would say this was like a 3.5, maybe four star for me. Um, so I definitely really liked it. Do recommend it. It was cute. Um, it was actually pretty quick, but at the same time, I mean, it's a decent size. Like it, it wasn't like incredibly short. It's about 360 pages. So, um, I mean, it like definitely was long enough to make you feel really attached and connected to the characters, but it wasn't too long. It was kind of the perfect size. So I definitely really recommend and liked the book Ready or Not. And that was my last book of March. And since then, my first book, first and only so far of April was an older, another book of the month pick, but an older book of the month pick that I've been very, I've been dying to read this book for a while. And that is The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. This is a historical fiction, which she pretty much always writes historical fiction. And I picked up this one because this is my sister's favorite, one of her favorite books of all time. And I was like, how can somebody say that a historical fiction is like your favorite book of all time? Because I feel like there's so many other genres that are like, I don't know, more intriguing to me. Like his, historical fiction has just never been that book, that genre that I just am like, oh, I just love this genre and I, it's my favorite. But let me tell you, this book was a five star. I absolutely loved and could not put this book down. And every time I kept thinking, oh, I must be nearing the end. I mean, I must be, I must be coming real close to the end of the book. I'd look at my, I listened mostly um, to this one on audio. I'd look at the audiobook and there was like six hours left. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I was excited. I was happy that there was still six hours left of my audiobook because I was like not ready to put it down. Even when it came to the very end of the book, I was like not even ready. I wasn't ready to pick up another book for, for days because I was like, I can't really stop thinking about these characters. I could not stop thinking about like just the heartbreak. I mean, this book made me cry. It made me, it was so emotional. I was so attached to these characters that I was like, I mean, oh, I just could not stop. I, this has been my favorite historical fiction I've ever read to this day. Now I haven't read many, but I have read some and this is so far topped them all. This was a five star favorite historical fiction I've ever read. And honestly, it ranks very highly on like my favorite standalone books. Um, it's hard to compare a standalone to a series and I've got so many favorite steer series that I've ever read, but this book is, it, it's so high up there. It's, it is one of my favorite standalones I've ever read. Um, and that's, that's very, that's like a very highly rated book to me. I mean, I have read hundreds and hundreds of books and to say that this is one of my favorite standalones is like, it's a big deal. That's, that's very, very high praise. And so thank you to my sister for convincing me to finally read this book. And because of that, because of how much I love that one, my next book and my current read right now has been The Women, which is Kristen Hanna's most um, recent book. She just came out with this one. Um, and so I will keep you guys updated. I'm not like super far into it. I'm less than halfway in um, about chapter 12. But so far I am very much enjoying this book. Um, it does have me intrigued but not as much as The Great Alone did. So um, I'm I'm very excited to see like where this one goes and how attached to this main character, Frankie is her name, um, to just see how attached to this main character and where this story brings me because I felt like it wasn't till about halfway through The Great Alone that I was so attached that I just could not put it down. And so I'm very excited. I'm very excited to see where this one lands. I already know a few people who have read this and so, and it's been rated very highly. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. So thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope that that was 
that was about as rapid fire as I can get for reviews on this many books. So um, thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time. Bye.